Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about a beginner JavaScript practice problem, which is called finding the minimum value in a string or a, a list. And this problem is something that you really need to understand as a beginner because there's so many times where you need to loop over a collection and find something that's like a maximum or a minimum or like an average or just to find one value inside of a list. It's really important to know. So before we get started, let me first say, please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in more practice problem videos, because I'm going to have a lot more videos like this coming up in the future. But let's go ahead and get started and look at the code. Like always, I'm going to code it up, explain the code, and then walk through it with the debugger so that you can understand it a little bit better. So let me just restate the problem one more time. We want to be able to loop through a array and find a minimum value. So this is going to involve a couple of things. So first of all, it's going to involve a loop or some type of iteration so you can check every value. You're going to have some type of conditional logic to check if your value you're at is less than the lowest value that you found. Um, and then I think that's about it. You probably have to set some values. Let's just go ahead and walk through how you do this. So on paper, let's just say you're doing this on paper, right? And this is usually the easiest way to understand how these problems are solved. So on paper, let's say you have um, a list of numbers. So 5, 9, 2, I don't know, 19, negative 3, and 6. How would you do this on paper if you had those numbers just kind of laid out in front of you? Just kind of visualize with me for a second. You'd first probably look at the first number and say, well, I don't have a minimum value yet. So let's just mark this as our minimum. So I'm going to go up here and say minimum is 5. And then we go to the next number and we say nine. Well, we have a minimum now of five and we say is nine less than five? No, it's not. So let's just go ahead and step over to number two. Is two less than five? It is. So let's just kind of cross out or erase that five we originally wrote on our paper and let's just put a two on it. And then let's go down the list again. 19 is 19 less than two? No. Is negative three less than two? Yes. So we'll just mark off or erase that previous value of two and put negative three. And then we get to the last number is six less than three. No. So at this point on the paper, you probably just circle negative three and you're done. You found the minimum value. Pretty easy to do on paper, pretty easy to do in your head. So it's also pretty easy to do in code. Let's just take a look. So if you're familiar with variables, you're going to want a variable that you can define, which is going to change over time. So we'll declare a new variable called min, set it equal to null. Now the assumption is that we have a list of numbers, right? And I haven't defined anything. So let me just go ahead and write out a list of numbers. Um, let's just do a different list of things that we could do. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so we have a list of numbers, we need an S. And then we have a min variable that we can keep track of the minimum. So like I said, one thing you can do is loop through the numbers. So if you know how to do a loop, I'm going to do a for loop. So you can say for um, let number of numbers. And that will loop us and give us every number one by one. You still with me? All right, hopefully this is making sense. And then like we done the paper, you check if the number you're currently on is less than the number you have, then you need to reset the number you have. Or if the number you have has not been found yet, just set it. So I'm going to say if min is equal to null, if we don't actually have it, it's undefined, then we just set min equal to the number. Secondly, what we can do is an else if and then we want to check again on paper, going back to that paper, paper example, if you visualize it, if you check that the current number you're at is less than the minimum you have, then you want to set your min to something. So I'm going to say if the number we're looking at is less than min, then min is equal to number. And this is the same as like erasing that minimum number you had on your paper and writing a new one or crossing it out and writing a new one. So set the new minimum. And then finally, we could just print this out at the bottom, print out what our minimum is. Your minimum was do some type of string concatenation here. Okay. 
So this right here, this is how you do it. And it, you can apply this same technique to other things. So if this was a string and you wanted to find the shortest or the longest string in this list, you would just have to change some of your logic here. You'd have to change mainly this and say is, let's say this is, if you pretend for a second that number is actually a string, you could do number.length is less than min.length. And then you have to keep track of some other stuff. But I'll probably save that for another problem because it's a little bit more complicated if these aren't numbers themselves, if these are objects or strings or something. But we've solved the problem here, right? This is the solution. Let's just verify that this is a solution by running it in my debugger. So I'm going to click debug with node here and give that a second to load up. And when it's done, we can hover over min and see that it prints out negative 10. And to verify that, we can look through this list and we see that yes, negative 10 is the minimum of all these values. We've solved the problem. Wasn't too hard to do. Hopefully this all made sense. And I'm going to step through it with the debugger just one time for you to make sure that this really sinks in. So let me put a break statement or break point at the beginning here. I'm going to say debug with Node.js. And let's just step through one by one. So one thing I could do is just let's put a couple of watchers here. So we want to keep track of numbers, keep track of min. And those are the two variables that we have. We could also keep track of this. And we will see in a second what that does. So step through. Numbers is declared. It's an array of six values. Step again. Min is declared and set to null. Now we're at the loop. So we're going to step through the loop. It'd probably be useful to print this out. Okay, so we're at the first number, which is three. We check is min equal to null. It is. So we're going to go into that if statement. And then we're going to reset min to that new number, which is three. So if you pay attention to this min value here and pay attention to what number was, you'll notice that min is just going to be set to three if I step. Pretty awesome, right? And then we keep on doing that, right? We look at eight. Eight is not less than min. So we basically skip. And then we check for negative three. Is min or is the number less than negative three? It is. So we're going to replace min of three with negative three. Boom. Awesome. We do it again with negative 10, which happens to replace minimum. We do it with nine, but we skip because nine is not less than negative 10. And then finally we get the three, same jazz going on. And we get to the console log here, which will print out your minimum was negative 10 and you solve this problem. All right, so that basically wraps up this tutorial video, this practice problem uh, video. If you want more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be posting more and more videos with JavaScript and Python practice problems. I feel like a lot of people like these. Um, and they might get a little bit harder in difficulty. I'm going to try to exhaust all the easier practice problems, and then I'm going to move on to harder, like, code challenging problems. But this is a good thing to make sure you understand, because looping over and finding a certain type of minimum or maximum is very important in your programming language. All right, again, I'm Cody Seibert, and happy coding.